Nerji is a physical powerhouse. We saw in episode 10 of season 2 of Jujutsu Kaisen that he can casually beat up cursed spirits and transfigured humans without much difficulty. We also saw him climbing buildings in what it looks like it took him seconds to do for him to reach the top of the building to scream out Nanami that Gojo has been sealed away. But from what I've been reading so far in my comment sections, especially around the Yuji centric videos, is that some of you guys actually find Yuji's powers boring and as a result of it, you find Yuji himself a boring character. That is what I find interesting and don't get me wrong, I have other videos specifically talking about his character already uploaded and in the works for more to be uploaded but to say his powers are actually boring is a different argument completely. Okay, so let's look at what we know so far with Yuji's powers. We know he has two moves that involve cursed energy, which is the Divergent Fist and Black Flash Attack, both of which involve punching. There's no energy blast or a special beam coming out of his fist. It's literally just punches. Whilst training with Gojo, it was discovered that Yuji's cursed energy has a time lag. By striking with his fist using a thin layer of cursed energy, a second wave of cursed energy is unleashed a few moments later, effectively creating two impacts with one punch. Black Flash greatly amplifies the user's physical strike when cursed energy is applied to it within one millionth of a second and as we see with Yuji, he uses it to great effect against his enemies and I would say is probably his go-to move. It's like with every big character that has their own iconic move, Yuji just made the Black Flash his own move. Even though Nanami was the original king of Black Flash, okay so that's the techniques that we know he has. But us fans have speculated that he may have a memory altering technique as the instances with Todo and Chozo who went from fighting against Yuji to then suddenly becoming best friends with him and in Chozo's case he became an older brother to Yuji. Another technique fans have speculated is him having a body swap technique similar to how Kenjaku does his technique. Now if the speculated curse techniques happen to be true then I think that automatically debunks the whole Yuji's powers are boring argument. And in all honesty, the memory altering technique and body swapping, you associate those type of powers to evil villainous characters and not necessarily to heroic characters. If Yuji does end up using those techniques, will he end up slowly turning into a dark path? Sukuna was also a human until he mastered curse techniques and energy which ultimately led him down a dark path into becoming the king of all curses. He is known as the disgraced one, the fallen if you will. So could Yuji become the next disgraced one if he ends up using these techniques? Who knows, that's just speculation from my end but let's just go with the abilities that we know for certain that Yuji has which are the Divergent Fist and Black Flash. And on top of that, his insane durability and strength. Sukuna when he took over Megami's body sliced up Yuji in chapter 214. We have seen Sukuna slice up special grade curses like Mahito, the cursed room in episode 4 of season 1 and even Maharaga. And the fact that Yuji took the slice attacks whilst being flesh and blood and still landed punches on Sukuna after he got sliced and thrown to different buildings is nothing short of superhuman. But still, why do some fans still think his powers are basic and boring despite Yuji showing superhuman strength and endurance that some of the other Jujutsu sorcerers without their cursed techniques to protect them may not have survived the punishment Yuji has taken over the course of the story. When I look at different main shonen protagonists and their powers, I'll be honest, I think quite a lot of them have basic power sets themselves. Look at Gon from Hunter x Hunter. He literally has the same abilities as Yuji in the sense that he himself is also a physical powerhouse for someone so young. Natsu from Fairy Tail is a fire user and uses Dragon Slayer magic which isn't a unique thing in his world as there are many elemental fighters in Fairy Tail and there are seven other Dragon Slayers who use Dragon Slayer magic. But again, his powers are not anything special or anything we haven't seen before in any other series with a fire user. And Natsu mainly uses physical attacks like punching and kicking, but he just surrounds his hands with fire and then proceeds to punch his opponents very similar to how Yuji surrounds his hands with cursed energy when he uses Black Flash. The biggest shonen of all time, One Piece. In the first three sagas which are the East Blue, Alabasta and Sky Pier sagas, all Luffy had was him being a man made of rubber and you can make the argument that all of his moves are basic. 
All of his moves are punches and kicks. Every major fight he is involved in ends with either a punch or a kick. Now obviously gear 2 adds more to his power and then when you add Haki into the mix which allows him to do moves like Red Hawk and go into gear 4. Gear 5 is a mystical godlike ability that lets him do almost anything he wants but early on in the first 3 sagas which covers the first 302 chapters when Skypiea officially ends. 302 chapters guys, Jujutsu Kaisen is nowhere close to that number yet. When Gear 2 made its appearance in the manga, it was chapter 387 and episode 272. Do you honestly believe Jujutsu Kaisen will get to those numbers? The main point I'm trying to make with Luffy is that for many years, fans of One Piece, when they were following the series live week by week, and especially in those early sagas, have seen Luffy just use his rubber abilities and use his punching and kicking to finish off his opponents without it being a super powered up punch or kick. Like there was no Haki at that time and you can make the argument that Luffy's powers at that time were also basic. Goku in Dragon Ball was using martial arts same as any other character but obviously in Dragon Ball Z he changed and even Naruto and Ichigo you can say that they all had powers at the beginning of their own stories that were basic and similar to the rest of the characters in their own stories. But I feel because it's Yuji who is the main character of one of the big shonen titles nowadays, I feel he is getting the heat that other shonen protagonists didn't get before him. Yuji's powers are basic, I won't deny that, but I still find it fun seeing how he overpowers these monsters with just his raw strength. If anything, compared to his other shonen counterparts, he is the unique one in his own show. Luffy has the devil fruit which a lot of the characters in One Piece have as well. Goku uses Ki which even human characters like Krillin and Yamcha can use as well. Yo is a shaman just like his twin brother and friends with one of them turning into a shaman in his late teens. He wasn't even born a shaman. Gon using Nen and having super strength and speed which is something that his own best friend Killua can also do. You get the pattern here. Now, I know technically Yuji is using cursed energy when he's using his two main techniques, but he still hasn't used his own cursed technique yet. So for now, he's not like the other Jujutsu sorcerers when they use cursed techniques and even in episode 8 of season 2, when Yuji was fighting against the Locust Cursed Spirit, he was just out punching it, nothing else. No Black Flash, no Divergent Fist, nothing. He was just rapidly punching the shit out of the Cursed Spirit. The fact that he's the only Jujutsu sorcerer fighting these cursed spirits without a cursed technique I find unbelievable. And according to Akutami, we're not far off from the end of the story now. So if that really is the case, then Yuji has been fighting off against these monsters for a majority of the story with just pure strength and power. Now, is Yuji a Mary Sue for that? Well, that's a debate for another video. But for me, it just makes his character more heroic in my opinion. Because anyone else would just run away and not attempt to fight. But not Yuji. The fact that he will fight only with his fists against these monsters proves that he will literally leave his body on the line to save the innocent civilians. What I find really interesting is that his two moves Divergent Fist and Black Flash are essentially just powered up punches where we have seen the traditional superheroes like Superman and if you want to use Goku then Goku in movies like Wrath of the Dragon who use powered up punches to finish off the bad guy. Even Luffy, even though he is a pirate, he does mainly heroic acts across his own story. Having the ability to punch the enemy is seen as a heroic symbol. That's why you always see Superman just punch his way through his enemies, it's seen as heroic. And like I mentioned already, Yuji just having the balls to fight off against cursed spirits with just his hands shows how much damage he is willing to put himself through just so the normal people are okay. But then the other two rumored techniques of body swapping and memory altering, these are very manipulative techniques. You're basically controlling another person without their consent or will to fight back. Unless Yuji asks for permission to body swap with someone, but these are techniques that's unheroic. Maybe Yuji has to decide if he's willing to use these manipulative curse techniques and reach a state of mind that has to be the grey area which Yuji does not want to be from what we have seen in the story. Or he has to stick with his own techniques and come up with a more powerful powered up punch. I feel there's more inner turmoil and conflict within Yuji's heart and Akutami loves to punish Yuji so maybe there will be inner conflict in him using these techniques. 
It's a bit like in the original Beyblade where Kai was using Black Dranza to easily overpower his opponents. But that Beyblade was stealing other users' bit beasts and was working under an evil organization. It's the temptation of evil is what I'm trying to get at. And Sukuna became the king of all curses. So he failed in avoiding the temptation of power as we have seen in the Gojo vs Sukuna fight that Sukuna always seeks more knowledge and power even if it means he will get beaten up for it like how Gojo was doing for a majority of that fight. Yuji could succeed where Sukuna has failed in this regard, but let's see, maybe I'm looking too much into it. But I want to go over to you guys now. What do you think? Do you think Yuji's powers are too basic and boring? If they are, please let me know your reasons on why you feel Yuji's powers are boring. I'm really keen on seeing your comments regarding this. Anyway, stay tuned for more Jujutsu Kaisen content, and of course, like your tribal chief always says, don't forget to subscribe to the Shaman Tribe.